The world's nuclear detectives are being tested by tiny atoms of a radioactive noble gas. Its name means the stranger, xenon. Increasingly, experts at the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, CTBTO, are meeting the stranger as they monitor the globe for signals of nuclear explosions. Emissions of xenon frequently are being detected at many locations, and the points of origin are increasing. For the CTBTO, not a good trend. If you have more emission than you anticipate, then you have a problem. Certain isotopes of xenon, called radioxenon in its radioactive forms, are like the DNA of a nuclear explosion. They provide forensic evidence for analysts. For North Korea's nuclear tests over the past seven years, CTBTO teams worked together to track airborne xenon isotopes. Radioxenon is often called the smoking gun of a nuclear explosion, and today we have the capability to zero in on it. The international monitoring system now includes many sensors, many radionuclide stations with equipment to detect very tiny amounts of radioxenon in the atmosphere. Atoms of xenon seep from a nuclear test site mainly through geological fissures and faults. The gas drifts along weather paths and may be carried long distances in quantities that are far too low to pose health or safety hazards. When completed, the International Monitoring System will have 40 stations worldwide to detect traces of noble gas, like xenon. They transmit data to the CTBTO for analysis day in, day out. The International Monitoring System is an ultra-sensitive network of nuclear sensors. So sensitive, in fact, that the ghost-like puffs of radio xenon can be tracked down to a few hundred atoms in one cubic meter of air. The puffs come from civilian, not military sources. Global uh, network that is uh, calibrated and uh, operated and continuously over the year is sending about 18,000 samples a year to the International Data Center here in Vienna. So where is the noble gas mainly coming from? Most people might cite the usual suspects, the world's 400-plus nuclear power reactors producing electricity, but they would be wrong. Nuclear plants emit only small quantities of xenon because they have effective retention systems. Then, in 2002, for the first time, monitoring scientists cited a more unlikely source, namely facilities that produce life-saving medicines. The plants make radioactive isotopes used in nuclear medicine around the world. They are operated in about 10 countries today. Worldwide, most producers are centered in Europe, North America, and Australia. But production is projected to grow this decade. In Asia, Indonesia operates a plant in Serpong that is ready to expand. The growth rate in this area of the medical isotope is about 10% per year. So we need to increase our production because we are the only producer in this area. The Serpong facility serves 16 hospitals in Indonesia and exports to medical centers in Bangladesh, Thailand, Malaysia and Vietnam. Plans are to expand exports to India and Japan. Radioisotopes in healthcare especially an element called technetium 99 m are in high demand. Each year, more than 35 million procedures using the isotope are done around the world. The top uses are for imaging blood flow to the heart, for mapping the spread of cancer to bones, and for scanning the brain, kidneys, and other organs. The complex isotope production process creates radioxenon. The gas is measured and filtered to keep emissions within health and safety standards. As production of medical isotopes increases, so does the prospect of radioxenon emissions into the environment. But we are aware of the xenon that might increase if we produce more. So that's why we try to find ways to, to reduce it. Why are multiple sources of radioxenon raising such concerns? Not for health or safety reasons, 
since the emissions are far too low. The real challenge we face today is differentiating the various sources of xenon. Xenon can be released from medical or industrial isotope facilities and the re releases can look very similar to releases from a nuclear explosion. That's because the isotopic composition is very similar in both cases. The picture can get complicated. The samples uh, from our stations are analyzed and uh, quantified on a daily basis. And uh, here I show an example of uh, data uh, received from one of the stations and uh, the detection in XIN-133, so you see by this peak. The peaks need to be accurately identified. We use the atmospheric transport models to analyze xenon dispersion throughout the atmosphere. The model enables us to track xenon detections back to their sources. This allows us to assess xenon emissions and to improve our understanding of xenon background levels in the environment. Stakes are high for the international monitoring system. Civil sources of airborne radio xenon could mask signals from a nuclear explosion. As the uh, production diversifies and goes to other locations, it's going to be more difficult for us to do our job. What will eventually happen is our job in the IMS uh, to measure for nuclear explosions will become more difficult. Therefore, we need to understand emissions better at the plants, at the sources, and ultimately reduce emissions. Scientists and producers are working with the CTBTO to meet the Xenon challenge. Improved monitoring and lower emissions are twin goals. Through joint campaigns to Japan, Kuwait, Indonesia and elsewhere, advanced systems have been set up to measure noble gas in more places. These campaigns um, provided evidence of the background of background levels of radioxenon in the atmosphere. Isotope producers are receptive. Ya, saya sangat senang bisa menginstall alat monitor xenon di Jakarta. Kita operasikan setiap hari secara kontinu dan mengirimkan data itu ke Wina secara kontinu juga untuk dievolasi di sana. The system in Indonesia is mounted and operated in a customized transportable xenon lab, TXL. The unit can be up and running in days after delivery. The TXL has been used in, in collaboration with local partners, but also with the CTBTO to make measurements in locations across the world. Better detection is only part of the answer. The potential for ambiguous signals is all too real. CTBTO stations pick up xenon peaks nearly every day. Lower emissions during isotope production is seen as one way forward. The biggest impact producers can have for controlling their emissions uh, partially resides in their chemistry. Many facilities uh, are looking at different methods. At the Serpong facility in Indonesia, a stack monitoring system was installed with US and CTBTO support. We fully cooperate with them, with the CTBTO. Uh, to make uh, dis to distinguish that our xenons come from medical isotope production, not coming from the uh, weapons test. Leaders from the world's largest producers of medical isotopes increasingly support CTBTO initiatives. Joint work today centers on steps to establish a voluntary threshold for emissions and to improve understanding of background levels in the air. Indonesia is building up its national capabilities. Karena uh, posisi Indonesia di Katulistiwa cukup strategis untuk dipasang radionuklide monitoring system juga. The record shows that even small quantities of xenon can affect the reliable detection of nuclear explosions. Ultimately, cooperation benefits bigger goals. Our uh, prime responsibility, which is verifying the test ban treaty, uh, it's all about collaboration because we have to put everything in the context of uh, uh, helping an international monitoring system to assist the verification of the treaty. When people see that the cooperation, I think it can only help for trust building. The noble gas background measurement is an important factor because uh, it's one of the important measure of that gives 
the nuclear nature of a test.